everybody, this is Boaz Neophiler, how are you? It's so exciting reading your comments. Do you have any, any clue how much light and love you're spreading around throughout your day? Did you ever pat yourself on the back and say, darling, you're a real fairy. You're spreading light and love and magic wherever you go. I'm so proud of you. And that's what we need in times like this in the world. That's what we need, people to believe in that magic, people to bring it back into reality. Because you see, as I see it, the history of mankind is only a part of our past. Because we alternate between times that are, when we look at them at retrospective, become time of legends and times that are times of history. And indeed, as we step into the new age, the age of Aquarius, we are re-entering the time of legends. We are feeling the pressure that can turn the coal in our hearts into diamonds and make humanity what it can become. So by believing in these ideals and spreading them around in disregard to the fact that reality isn't always innocent, nice, and truth-worthy. Choosing to be that way, nevertheless. Reigniting that mantra within you, that the post-traumas that I have experienced through people and society do not give me the right to harm myself nor others doesn't give me an excuse a worthy excuse even, to lower my standards of who I want to become and who I want to be and how I want to be able to look at myself in retrospective one day the evil done to us and the evil in the world does not guarantee us the right to join it. Not even for a breath. Nevertheless, we are human. And when we do transgress, and we all do transgress, know to walk back. Know to climb down from that tree. No to apologize. No to repent. Have the honor to do that for yourself and for others. As if you are repenting not before your child or before your love or before your family or before your people that work for you, but before Creator herself. I heard a wise man say that we should live in front of people as we live in front of ourselves. And we should live in front of ourselves as if we live in front of Creator. So back to the time, the celestial time, we are within a week that is still a good week to complete, to succeed, to take things forward within this retrograde and that abundance of Piscean energy in the sky that all it wants to make us do is sleep and forget and recall into that warm fuzzy bubble, not thinking about coronaviruses, or global warming, or politics, or war, or the economy, or God knows so many other things in our personal lives. The anxiety and fear ruling the spectrum are absolutely overwhelming. You know, the health uh, 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 department says that we should disengage from being together. <laughs> that we shouldn't be in crowds, you know, that we should 
isolate ourselves. So I say, isolate yourselves from the news a little bit, you know. I mean, don't be unaware of what's happening because there's so much illusion as well. Let's take the coronavirus as, as an example. On the one hand, there's so much panic going around, okay? This is just a kind of flu. We've handled these things before. Worse are going to come, whether we like it or not. And statistically, every time you pass the road or step into your car, you're much more likely to die than a, from a coronavirus, even in Italy or in uh, places that have large earthquakes, you know. So the panic, on the one hand, is amazing. And there are those in government, in offices, that utilize this panic in order to heighten control which is not necessarily a bad thing, but some people see it as, you know, such a conspiracy that they don't believe that Corona even exists. They think it, it is all fabricated. And I find that preposterous, you know, and dangerous as well. Because I, 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 if, if they're so sure it's invented, why don't they travel to one in China? And, and walk a bit in the hospital without any mask and see how brave they are. <laughs> so this energy in the sky really, you know, it's like a thick mist. It says, you know, maybe you should just, you know, stop rowing for a while and just, you know, see where this all leads. Let's, let's just go to sleep and wake me up when this is all over, okay? When I'm wiser and I'm older, as the song goes. Um, but that's not my advice. If you're listening to me, that's not Nia's advice. Yeah, I, I, I made my hair a little lighter. I love it. Anyway, um, Nia's advice is, and Boaz uh, concurs, <laughs> is that we should find, as I said in the last video, an inner rhythm that is breathable for us, sustainable for us, and takes into account the time that we are in, but takes into account first and foremost the self-responsibility that we need to uphold as the people holding the rows, as the droplets making the oceans, creating the tides, not giving it all up to passivity and chance, no. This is a time of hardening and becoming. This is the time in which the pressures that we are in are the pressures that are going to take the coal and the hearts of men and turn them into a diamond. And maybe, just maybe, make us, humanity, what it can truly become. Can we do it? Of course we can. Will we? Well, that depends on you. How about you? Will you? So this week is a week to continue doing, to continue achieving successes within the retrograde, within the retrograde. This is a week to be very careful with relationships and relationships to income in your life, to sources of income in your life. As Venus starts this week with a square to Pluto, talking about transformations and extra drama in these Venusian aspects. And in the middle of the week, she squares Saturn, bringing these subjects under a scrutiny and a test. And we're going to be left probably with less relationships and less sources of income. But they would be ones that would be positive and strengthened for us. So we would be remaining with less but less that is really more for us. In any case, these Venusian places, our relationship with the material plane and our satisfaction from it through money and value in our body and senses and relationships and love is undergoing a test throughout this week. Um, furthermore, Mercury is sextiling Uranus in the middle of the week 
and then it's sextiling Venus. So Uranus in the beginning of the week, and then Venus by the middle of the week. And even though it's in retrograde, this is a time that a lot of value could be created through friends, through relationships, through utilizing others and putting yourselves out there right now and understanding that together we can gain greater value than alone at the moment. Communality, community, family, not necessarily in the biological sense, but in the ideological sense. And networking in your own surroundings, you know, coming together as a community. Just as an example, something beautiful that I had nothing to do with it. In my city of Ramat Gan in uh, uh, Israel, um, recently there were two girls. One is in primary school, the other is in middle school. And they were brought up by a single mother. Um, unfortunately, she got cancer and within two and a half months she died and they were left alone. And the whole, we have a WhatsApp, you know, uh, uh, group for people living in the neighborhood established by the city municipality where we can all exchange information that's why we knew about it and everybody chipped in together and these children are never going to miss anything materialistic at least anymore you know of course emotionally this tragedy is going to be with them and shape them their whole lives but knowing that they would be okay and have a roof on uh, over their heads and you know, a full fridge and clothes and, and they could pay their bills is already a great comfort. And that's the power of community. And in the capitalist liberal systems, we tend to forget that. Or at least governments want us to forget that. They want to uh, heighten our individuality and make us think that it's much more important than communality. But it's not. You see, because if others would have not created such a prolific system, how would we have enjoyed it? And it is about gathering this world and making it one. It's the only way we can heal it and ourselves. So, Saturday, the 29th, wonderful day to go outside, wonderful day for activity, physical activity, doing new things with friends. I love it. Enjoying the fact that you are alive. Sunday is as well. A lot of trines in the sky this uh, Sunday. It's great for traveling. It's great for opening your mind into new exciting knowledge, mystic knowledge, spiritual knowledge. It's good for business as well. It's good for spending time with uh, uh, people that are older or um, in higher stature than you are. Monday isn't that great. It's more of a confused day. And so is Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday is the exact square between uh, uh, Venus and Saturn. As I stated before. Wednesday. Fun, fun, fun. It's the moon in, in, uh, in uh, the emotional sign of Cancer. But there's so many trines and um, sextiles in the sky. This is really a good day to be with others. It's a good day to be with friends. It's a good day to float along. And I wouldn't say stay at home. Stay with people that you feel at home with. Um, <laughs> and the fifth, Thursday, Venus moves into Taurus. Yay! Venus rules Taurus. She feels nice there. She could really play. She could really enjoy. And we can heighten our satisfaction from the material plane, from our senses, from being alive in this materialistic uh, 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 existence, from the value that we have from ourselves and everything we have and the relationships that we uphold and the love that we get and give. So a good time, a time for more satisfaction and tranquility for the next three to four weeks. Nevertheless, I want to remind you, okay, but let me go over the weekend. You know, so Thursday evening, I'm talking Eastern European time, uh, watch for overindulgence also Friday through the night and uh, up to Friday morning. It's a time that it would be, we could be a bit compulsive and too dramatic about things as the moon uh, uh, really opposes Saturn and Jupiter 
and Pluto all together they're coming into a conjunction and that's what I wanted to talk about we are going into a turbulent celestial energetic storm from the middle of March so we need to prepare and this is still a week that we can make a lot of things work for us so that's why I, it's important not to give up not to sleep not to doze right now you know there would be a time that things would become more intense and we're heading into that energy as we're heading already into a super moon in Virgo opposing Neptune and the Sun okay every full moon opposes the Sun but this time Neptune is conjunct the Sun so the full moon opposes Neptune from Virgo and this is an intense time that the serenity prayer of A A N A S A whatever you know is really apt you know God give me the strength to take control and change the things that I can as a droplet as a person as an individual as a part of my community to change upgrade and fix you know to amend give me the uh, strength to accept the things that I can't and the tolerance to accept them you know and give me the wisdom to know the difference because this is a confusing time with all the Piscean energy in the sky this is a time of illusion and, and many mistakes so it's a good time to, to recoil a little and look at things from the inside you know and take a slower pace but don't become too passive don't become uh, uh, um, the sacrificial lamb So, um, that's about what I had to say for this week. I want to remind you that I'm coming over to Amsterdam the first week of April to see clients. If you want to see me for a private session, a reading, contact me. All the details are at the end of the slide. And then I'm coming to the southwest of the U.S. I'm going to be in California. I'm going to be in Arizona. I'm going to be in Nevada. And I'm going to be in Utah. So, if you want a reading with me or study at one of my workshops or lectures, this is the time to contact me. I'll send you my itinerary and we'll meet up. And the prices are amazing for this tour. So, it's really, really worth it. I hope to see you. And for anything at all, you can just contact me. All the details are at the end of the slide. And we all heighten the light within ourselves, within our lives, within our communities. May we live long and prosper. Amen.